How many data set? How many pro data products did you all come up with as a product of your research? How many came up with five or more? Five or more data products as a result of your research? Yeah. Yeah. How about, how about more than ten? Anybody come up more than ten? Sorry, it's not a numbers game. How many of you, when you listed your data types or your partners, how many of you listed data documentation or ways to describe your data? The librarian group did, if you're with the librarian. So uh, data documentation, right? It ensures that um, your data is able to be used by other people. Um, it's information about the data you capture. So you remember when we discussed our OMB definition and we looked at um, all of the factual information required to verify results? Well, if people don't know what to do with your data set once they find it, then they can't actually verify your scientific results. So the data documentation in itself is data. Um, it explains how it was created. It can talk about context, so what's the research impact of your project. Um, data structure, so what the file actually looks like. How many variables? Um, is, it, is, it a blank, is it a flat CSV? Is it an Excel file? Is it Stata? I'm actually going to ask you guys about your stats programs later because I'm curious. Um, and any sort of uh, the contents of the data set, is it just a group of observations? Is it a, you know, is it a time series of you know, 20 years of collecting samples in the exact same place? Um, and any types of manipulations or transformations you made. So if you built in, um, you know, you put in NAs for missing data fields, or uh, if you decide to eliminate certain fields, or what do you do when people, or what do you do with blank values, um, things like that. What kind of statistics did you do? Here's a few examples. How many of you either keep, how many of you keep field notebooks for your own research? Or what about lab notebooks and put it all together? Because I'm always corrected when people will go out and work in the field. I call them lab notebooks and it's another name of field notebooks, not lab notebooks. Put it all together. That in itself is data. Your everyday observations, what you're thinking, what, it, um, what you're looking at. Uh, the observations of your graduate students, or your colleagues, and also documenting your research methodology. So what is your sample collection method? What type of, uh, what type of analysis are you running? Are you running some sort of regression analysis? Are you trying to find causation between two different things? Another thing are lab procedures. So a lot of labs, particularly at Florida State, I work with the psychology group a lot, and their building is, it's, Pretty big building. It's like six stories, and it's just a bunch of labs. So it'll be like the Baumeister lab or the, the Sarah Hart lab. And most of the labs on their campus have standard operating procedures or lab procedures that all their graduate students or any, uh, it's actually not just grads, undergraduates work in the lab, um, researchers from other departments, they all have to read lab procedures. This is how we do things. These are, this is how we clean our materials and put them away at night. These, you know, these are how, we, this is how we share information. This is how we label our variables. This is how we put the, you know, this is how we manage data from start to finish. Um, copies of that in a lot of, in a lot of times um, are research data, are very useful research data. So what is the methodology used in your lab? Um, another thing is a data codebook or a data dictionary. How many of you all know what a codebook is? That's good. If you all know, we haven't even talked about it. A codebook is essentially a readme file for your data set. Um, like I said, I'm a social scientist kind of by background, and I do work with a lot of survey data. Um, and one of the sites I use is called ICPSR. It's a crazy acronym that I don't even try to mess up. Um, but every data set I download has a codebook. It's a PDF that I double click on, and it opens it up, and it has the name of the study, and then it has tons of information, depending on the data set. So a lot of information about the PI, the co-PI, all these things I mentioned with uh, methodologies and lab procedures and things of that nature, and then it'll give you a variable list. So back in the day of old statistics programming, you guys probably don't use SPS, but one of the programs I used to use had an eight character variable, in it, which you know as well as I do can uh, make your information pretty much incoherent because nobody knows what VAR 12C 4 is. I don't because I made it up. Um, but in your code book, it actually has all those variables listed, what they mean all your weights, your skip patterns, what do you do with blank values, things of that nature. And um, some of them literally are readme files. There are text files that read me just like a software license agreement. Um, and it is best practice to create some sort of code book with, for, your, uh, for your data sets that you produce. This doesn't have to be this holy grail of a giant PDF that lists everything. 
It could be a tab inside of a spreadsheet that just says what every variable means, who the data manager is, and who to contact, and um, information about statistical analysis that was done in the spreadsheet itself. So don't be intimidated by the word codebook or data dictionary. It doesn't have to be huge, but a data dictionary is something you want to develop as your research project um, kind of evolves and matures. So that you have a systematic way of capturing the information that's being produced throughout the whole uh, life cycle of your project. And from personal experience, code books make life a lot easier. Um, I guess I have time to tell you a story. Um, I did transportation planning, so that was what I, uh, that's kind of my academic background uh, outside of librarianship. And so what I did is uh, we did this crazy feasibility study where we wanted to model what it would look like. Tallahassee is a, a city of about 150,000 people. We wanted to model what would happen if we tore up the main south, uh, north south corridor and tore open the, the main east west corridor and put light rail at each one. Um, and so we used all kinds of data for this. We used traffic patterns, we used um, census information so that we could, you know, in GIS put all, you know, where people live. So we had a map of where people were, we had road networks. We also needed survey data so that we could kind of get an idea of how the bus routes um, picked people up, what their origins and what their destinations were, because these bus routes would feed into the, uh, to the main light rail lines. So what we did is we contacted Star Metro, which was our, uh, it's our transit agency in Tallahassee, and we asked them if they had any survey data. Do you ever survey your riders? I said, absolutely, we'd be happy to give you any survey data we, ha uh, we have. Just so happens they did a ridership study, uh, a ridership survey six months prior which means that they rode the bus um, with patrons, and they just asked questions. I've actually been you know, asked these questions before. I ride the bus most days to work. They just asked, where, are you from, or where did you get on the bus from? What's your origin, and what's your destination? And just some kind of demographic variables around, you know, like age and what your occupation and stuff like that is. So I got the survey data, I was like, great. My job was to put it in um, to GIS. So I would have one map of all the origins, one map of the destinations, and then I had like a connectivity map that sort of connected all the dots. But what happened is I couldn't read any of the variables. Um, the variables were labeled um, like OD1, OD2, DO1, DO2. One was, I promise you, called VAR1, VAR2, short for variable. Um, and so I got the spreadsheet. That was all I had was a flat CSV file of all that information. So I thought about just kind of throwing it away and not incorporating survey data into my study. But I got lucky. And one of, it was done by an intern, and that intern was a graduate of our apartment. Um, when, and so we had her contact information. And she actually came to our lab, and she fixed it for us. She wrote us a little code book in a word file. She said, this very, we're all variable, variable means. Don't worry about missing values. It just meant that the person didn't want to fill it out. So do with that what you will. They're not mistakes. They're just intentionally left blank. And so I fixed it. We played into GIS, and our project worked, and got a degree. But um, I wouldn't have, well, I probably would have, but I would have had a harder time had I not been able to actually get a hold of the person who made the data set, because there was no code book. I had completely incoherent, worthless data. But it ended up being great. What about metadata? How many of you guys have heard the term metadata? Spying, fun stuff. Does anybody want to give me a definition? Describes data. Data about data, describing data. You're right. Let's give you an academic definition. Structured information that describes, explains, locates, or otherwise makes it easier to retrieve, use, or manage an information resource. Pretty important for data management. But as some of you astutely put it, it's just data about data. And so you're going to learn a lot more about metadata and properly describing your data, data sets as you create them later. So I'm just going to kind of tease and not steal other people's thunder. But it explains things like, um, you know, like our data documentation examples earlier. So methodology, structure, and organization, and they all have kind of required fields. How many of you ever actually had to create a metadata file or chose to do so? Good. A couple folks created metadata files for books. So I'm going to give you an example of a metadata. Or I'm going to give you an example. Um, where's my source? I have the source at the end of where I got this from, but I went into a data repository that's for oceanography. It's called the Biological and Chemical Oceanographic Data Management Office. And so I pulled a data set, mostly because it's an FSU researcher, so it caught my eye. And these are the required um, metadata fields 
for their repository. So we have a project title, our PI, our co-PI, and then we have a contact person, which just happens to be the PI. So they're all a little different. And you see these categories, I guess I can't point down there, right here. They all expand. So I expanded this for you. And one of, the, one of their required fields, which would make sense on a field like oceanography, where you're going out and collecting samples and information, you all probably have unique ways of doing things. It may vary by a uh, subset of your discipline. It may vary by uh, your lab. It may vary by your country and just how you do things. And so the acquisition description is something that's a required field in this um, data repository. So they have to write a narrative of how they actually collected their samples. And I believe somewhere in this data management file, I didn't give you the uh, I didn't give you the content information, but one of this actually has the research data manager as a required field. So you click on it, that way if you have a question about the data set, like I did, trying to geocode survey data, you know who to ask. So metadata sounds really complicated, and a lot of them are back-end XML files that make your data searchable through Google and things like that, so it is very complicated. One of my colleagues is a metadata librarian. His entire job is to describe digital objects. That's all he does. So it is a complex field, but just to kind of give you an overview of metadata as a type of data, because it's something else that needs to be considered in research. Any questions about metadata or data description? So I'm not going to give you as much time as I gave you. Actually, I'll give you about the same amount of time as we did last time. But uh, feel free. It's been, we've been in here for over an hour. So uh, I'm going to give you about 10 minutes. Feel free to use the restroom um, you know, and stretch and all that stuff. But I want you to pair back up with the same group. I want you to look at your data products and determine what type of documentation you need for each data set. Um, be creative. Um, it doesn't have to be one of the lab notebooks or anything like that I gave you. But um, help each other out, help each other learn how to describe each other's data. We'll take a break. We'll reconvene at 11.50. And then we're going to go through and push through one more segment. And I'm going to leave this up here for you so you have examples of uh, data documentation. Is that more useful than the instructions?